Day 5, 1981, Suzuki GS750L. So today we're going to do some inspection on this clutch issue that should be um, engaged where you're pulling traction. This should be when you pull the clutch handle, pushes those plates apart this direction so that you can, uh, you're basically disengaging the clutch, release the handle, boom, and you're uh, rolling. Clearly there's something wrong. This should be springing back, pull handle spring back and clearly something is not working i'm going to pull this clutch cover uh, crankcase right side crankcase clutch cover whatever you want to call it off and one of the things i like to do before i even get started is to take make sure i've got a really tight fitting screwdriver and then tap it tap this end with a hammer just to kind of get a little shock in there. These have been soaking with PB. I've hit all these with PB uh, several days ago. Um, but a little shock hit with the hammer with a very good fitting um, Phillips head screwdriver or a GIS if uh, you happen to have uh, GIS screwdrivers as well. Another little trick I like to do is to take and uh, clamp some vice grips onto that screwdriver that fits really well. That way I can get it seated in the screw really well and then put a lot of weight into this and then turn like with my right palm, push in and then use my left to turn this, uh, the vice grips. That just allows me to get good pressure on that screw head and uh, it minimizes the chance of stripping these. Clearly, you know, things happen, but uh, these are just little things that, that uh, I found that help you know, at least try to prevent stripping these screw heads. So the combination of the tapping and the vice grips worked. This one got just a little twist to it, so I had to go back and tap it with the vice grips on, but got them all loose. I could say a little PB, soak a few days, and then, you know, finding the right size screwdriver, make sure the head matches up, and then, uh, Tap on it, use some leverage, have a, a you know a good position where you can put good pressure and lean into it. Um, you can save yourself some headache with these old uh, Phillips head. So as I said in earlier videos, I've not uh, had the opportunity to work on a lot of these older Suzuki's, and I did say I liked this uh, the design where it's got that bar that kind of swings out. Uh, I may be questioning that design. Um, so these teeth here interact with the teeth on that lever at the top and these look they look okay i mean there looks like there looks to be enough tooth there to interact with the tooth there basically it slides in you can see inside there where they uh they come in and interact with it to pull it in and out but you can see that the shaft here is uh, got an issue so we've got the cover off obviously we're gonna need a new gasket and uh, we're pulling these springs off and then uh, take a little deeper look so we got our spring plate off and I expected to see something a little more complicated but basically the shaft sits in here and the spring that uh, interacts with the uh, the lever to pull and you know basically take pressure off these clutch plates um, I mean, everything looks good, um, a little sticky. So I'm actually going to pull all the plates out and just hit them with a little, um, a little oil and put them back in so that, uh, you know, just in case there's just kind of some dryness in there. But I mean, everything's as expected here. I'm going to clean up the gasket, order a new one, clean these plates up, put it all back together, see how it kind of springs about and then have to, you know, just quickly pull the. Uh, cover back off when we get a new gasket in to um, make it work but maybe it's just a, a matter of this uh, this pin here had had slipped off the the lever bar up there or something i don't know we're just going to kind of clean everything up put it back together and see how it works so we got all the plates out and uh, they're definitely sticky so it's going to be good to oil them up 
I'll tell you, on uh, further inspection of this system that I said I wasn't familiar with, but I'm a bit of seat-of-my-pants kind of guy sometimes, I would have removed the shaft before I started. Probably just attached the gear shifter because it's the same uh, splines and cinch that down and use that as uh, leverage to have pulled that um, shaft out of there. Mainly because the way these teeth line up with the... Um, the spline on the inside to pull those plates to depressurize those plates um it just been less chance of damage there's a little needle bearing that goes in here and then a little rubber seal to for the needle bearing that, that go in there but it's a pretty basic system i think ultimately what caused the issue was because this thing had sat so long the plates were just stuck together and uh, we're gonna hold them up so they don't stick together put them back in so getting really high tech here. Just got some oil. Just put it in the cap, use a little acid brush, polish up both sides with, um, as I put them, put everything back in. All right, so we oiled up all the plates, got them back in there, getting ready to put the springs on. I, I will tell you this, one of the things about this is a little odd is there's so much play in here. Now this end um, sets into the, uh, the cover. So it locks into here and that's what kind of holds it in position my guess is what happened is that i was trying to manipulate the clutch candidly if it heated this engine up it probably would have uh you know heated the oil lubed the lubricated the plates and everything would have probably done fine me making you know being a human tried to manipulate the clutch been sitting for decades the plates the friction plates primarily were dry and I think what I did was I spun this cog off of this cog and it just dropped back in. And, you know, so it, it wouldn't, there was no pull. Well, let's not do that. There was no pull on this. So this pulls against the springs to release and then back in. And it's not much. I mean, there's not a lot of thread there, but um, I wish there wasn't quite so much play there or a spring kind of pushing back on that but i'm not an engineer so they had their reasons and let's put it back together so we've got this back together getting ready to kind of adjust the uh, the clutch cable to make sure everything works but uh, i want to show you a little picture of these uh, the splines down in here when you put this shaft and you can see i did not put that grommet back in there because it's got to come back apart but when you put drop this in check this picture out So if you saw those, the, the two teeth are on the right side coming coming in. When you drop this shaft down in, you've got to rotate it until you get to the springs. And once you get to the springs, you'll feel the, the tension on it there. And then that's where you want to start your adjustment from. And now we're going to uh, play with the cable until we get it, uh, get it where we want it. So the clutch cable is adjusted and working as advertised. Just pull this back, get kind of in there. That's not a lot of pull, but it doesn't take much. I'll show you how I adjusted it. Let's see, I ran. So I started this bar where I had pressure on the springs. It's kind of just parallel with the case cover, really. Ran my um, threads were all the way in when I got that aligned. Ran all the adjustment in up at the handle so that I've got maximum adjustability here if I get cable stretch. And then made my adjustment by backing this off and then locking it down. So really once I had set, got this back to the spring pressure, locked it down and just backed, it was the slack out, it was what, a little over a quarter inch, three eighths maybe. Um, just kind of back that out and then set that in. And now, Got a pretty good release there. So there's day five of our 1981 Suzuki GS750L build. Um, like I say, it seems like that was all my fault, uh, trying to manipulate that clutch uh, that had sat for decades. The friction plates were dry and uh, had to warm that engine up before I tried to fool with those, uh, uh, manipulate the clutch, I think it would have been fine. But it's not terrible to get in there and inspect everything anyhow. 
Uh, so no harm, no foul. It's gonna cost us a gasket. Probably gonna order a new set of the needle bearings upper and lower for the shaft just to, uh, you know, just have new stuff in there since you got it open. But uh, there's day five.